Hi everyone and welcome to episode 27 of the Link Building Show and today we're here with Brett and we're going to talk about Evergreen versus Reactive campaigns. Hello Brett, so uh, I think you had some questions uh, regarding uh, Evergreen versus Reactive campaigns, so if you want to elaborate on that. Yeah, hi there Lee, it's great to, uh, great to be a, great to be a part of this, helping people understand. So mm -hmm. pretty much, you know, especially at Search Intelligence, I see great wins with um, trending uh, content, you know, pieces going out as well as your traditional evergreen. In terms of SEO, evergreen is, is referred to as, you know, sites, uh, a content on site that will always be referenced, that will always be around um, and it will always assist uh, rankings. But in terms of writing content, I mean, there are evergreen topics as well. So you have things, for example, in the UK, like the Royals, they're, you know, general public's always interested in the Royals. Mm -hmm. Um, and will always, but obviously there's things that pop up um, that start going viral on social media, and it's literally getting the campaigns done around those that you know that gain you know equal amount of traffic, equal amount of links. What's your take on the sensitive topics that one kind of needs to stay away from? Um, um, I think I think at the I think yeah, there's there's definitely a few that I've kind of like kind of had to. I think a lot of us have kind of had to talk ourselves out of doing it. I think like, for example, like war and things like that, heavy politics, like taboo, like kind of not as much as like crime and stuff, strayed away from that, like kind of heavy topics that maybe, if you think there's like something that not everyone want to report on and you think, mm, actually a lot of people kind of want to stay away with that. You kind of think it might be newsworthy to some people, but for the general census, you kind of got to stray away from certain topics. So even if you think they could be newsworthy, I think it's sort of kind of a moral standpoint. Because you've got to think, yeah, it might get me links, but do I really want to talk about this? Do I really want to have myself associated with this kind of topic? So I think you did, did like I said, war, heavy taboo topics and politics where I, I suppose you want to kind of remain neutral as well. You don't want to give yourself an agenda. So I think you've got to be careful with politics in that sense as well. Pretty much almost like bar rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, if everyone's jumping on the bandwagon on a particular issue around <laughs> war, for example, you know, you don't want to seem to be selling your soul uh, on joining that mart that mm -hmm. you know, everyone, everyone about that. So, so yeah, okay, it makes perfect. In terms of researching Evergreen, versus you know and the tools that you'd use the systems that you'd use to write good articles about you know evergreen uh, content and then seeing and finding uh, what's trending what's happening that you definitely do want to write about what you know how would one find find that find that information um i think i think when it comes to reactives i think a good thing to use is like social media like the trending tabs are there for a reason it's trending topics it's whatever, just checking the news is good for reactors. I think for Evergreen, I think especially, I think Evergreen you'd refer to like, like big data sets, like for example, ONS releases there, like Evergreen, they could always be referenced back. They're always stored somewhere. You can find the past few years worth of data on there. It's always going to be there. It's public uh, access, but for reactives, it's not always going to be public. For example, like with the Golden Globes or the Oscars or any big award shows, they only come around once a year. You can't always kind of capitalize on the uh, the kind of topics you can get from them all year round. It's basically, you're probably only gonna be able to get links and news worthy articles from them once they roll around. It's gonna be a lot harder, I think, um, out of season to get links with those topics. So like I said, social media for reactives and just looking at the news and then evergreen, um, just check in these big data sources like the ONS and seeing if they have any good releases on there. For example, I think Evergreen topics you can base around a pop culture. So you could do like top 10 films to do with this topic or whatever. They're good to be done all year round. But if you want to see like top 10 Christmas films, for example, that's only something you could do, probably get links for seasonally. Yeah. So that makes sense there. Yeah. Um, and in terms of trending, how fast do you need to be? How, how quick do you need to be getting, you know, finding something Yes, you want to write about it. You want to get that out there. Um, how quick do you need to to get that out? Because um, obviously that's going to impact your research time mm. uh, and it beat in the competition. Yeah, I think I think a couple of days max. Like you really need to for someone because if it's a if you're going through Google Trends, for example, um, and you see there's a big spike for a certain term, uh, it will it will be like in your press release you'll say something like spike on this day. If it's like a week, before, if you say like. Oh, it, if, you, if you're doing something on the 31st of the month and the spike happened on the 20th, the journalist might see that and be like, it's, it's a bit far off now. But if you say, 
the spike happened today, they give it. Oh God, that's that's big news. That's big. I didn't know about that. I think a lot of people won't know about that either. But I think yeah, capitalizing on and making sure it's a couple of days will make sure it's like news and it's fresh and people are going to report on it because it's it's current kind of thing. You want to you want to ensure it's current. You want to ensure it's the now and not something that's from two weeks before. So a couple of days max. I think for reactives, that's what I like to do personally, but for some people it might be slightly longer or even shorter than that. And um, in terms of the reactive being fresh, the longevity of it that, you know, so basically it, it takes two days, uh, you know, for, for yourself to go and get that out there. In terms of getting traction and being picked up, um, how long, you know, generally does that take out? You know, like the average of what you've, what you've seen, what you've noticed. Um, well, I think, if it's it depends on the cut some topics get instant wins like you you could send something out in one morning and it would get stories in that one morning or for example not some some stuff that's not as like newsworthy or not as prominent might you might get you might send out in the morning you might get the afternoon featured in the afternoon or something you might get into a what i found as well is um i found some reactives uh they don't get any instant pickup but someone might be writing an article about that topic uh, a week ahead so they might take your data and then they'll save that and then they'll use it in their article so some there's you get these rare occasions where you you'll do a reactive and you think oh nothing's really happened with it and then you'll find out you get a link somewhere a week later or i've seen some that weeks months after so i think depending on the topic it's usually pretty like it's about the same day you'd send it out you'd get the links but sometimes it can like i said it can be delayed because a journalist might see your data but it won't be enough for a full article I think that's that's what happens a lot as well. Like they'll see, mm, that's good data, that's a good find, but I don't think it's worth a full article. So they'll basically write their own thing later in the week and they'll cite your source in their article. I found that happens as well. So. Well, I was, yeah, that was good. Literally you've just answered <coughs> or led into my next question. In terms of citing, um, you know, given attribution, do you see that it's like maybe a 50-50 or do you find that, uh, you know, like the trending or the reactive, pieces tend to uh, generate uh, a, a, a more or well, greater volume of links compared to just normal evergreen uh, content? Um, well, it, it really depends, honestly. I think it's kind of, I think reactives are, you, you never really know if, because you might find it be like, oh, that's really interesting, but for some people might be kind of just any old news kind of thing. So. I, w I wouldn't say it's like luck based. I think it's just a bit of trial and error because you, you I think once you do more and more reactives, you'll find that uh, I think there's definitely some like easy wins um, that you can uh, basically find a reactive, send it out and it will get definitely get links. But I think it really with reactives is just trial and error to see which topics around a certain or, or seeing which topics just get more links than others. I don't think you can really uh, say they get more links. I think they, I, I haven't, really seen i think like evergreen and reactives it's hard to d decide really which is better for links because they're both really good it's just finding the right topic and getting the right journalist to see it really i think it <coughs> comes down to again just loads and loads of experience yeah yeah doing is you know doing where you just eventually end up with a gut feel um mm. and what, what, and that's what i love about content creation and i love about white hat is that it, it, it does away with having to rely on tools and systems and metrics and that it literally comes down to experience, gut feel, writing ability. And, yeah. uh, and, that, and that's that's what lands it. And that's what we're ultimately about. You know, it's it's humans you know, creating mm -hmm. content for other humans to consume. The f last question that I have for you in, in terms of, you know, you know, if you were to, to say to your team, what should your focus be um, if you were to draw a line in the sand and say, you know, what should you focus on trending? What should you focus on on, on evergreen? What, I mean, what would the split be? Hmm. Well, I, I don't know. I think I think it might even be a 50-50 or something. I think there's definitely some people that love reactives and there's some people that kind of stray away from them. I think it's 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 all down to how like your success, but it's also down to some people can just the ideas just come to them they might be like quick quick thinking ideas some people might have an amazing idea but it might be might take them a, a longer to think of but I, I, there's nothing wrong with that of course but uh, i think ge genuinely i think there's some people that <laughs> live for reactives as such uh, i think they, 
as soon as they see something in the news, they think they all these keywords coming into their head about it. And I think um, it would probably be like a like again a 50 50 split really. I think there's some people that love reactives, and there's some people that well not not necessarily struggle, but uh, then they don't do them as frequently. And yeah, I think if you if you ask people, you'd probably get a 50 50 split of who would like to focus on what. So I think. Obviously, like I said, that, that does kind of tie in because I said that you'd probably get similar amount of links with Evergreen and, and, and Reactive articles if you compared over time. So I think having a 50-50 split on the team as well is in that way is perfect because you can definitely generate links in so many different ways when it comes to Reactives and Evergreen. There's so many, there's so many opportunities as well. So And that's nice because it obviously balance out with journals that prefer, mm, yeah. you know, Evergreen versus Reactive. So you just mm. got to again get that gut feel and and just know what's going to work what would work what should work what could work and then you know pitch that to the right person definitely yeah awesome now i really appreciate your time thank you so much that's all right that's a really really good talk really good yeah i've, I've, I've definitely learned some stuff as well um I, i'm not as experienced as reactives as uh, other people but g genuinely I, I love i do love writing and when you find something that you just know clicks um and you you go yes that's good or you see something in the news and you you find I think the be the best feeling is go on Google Trends and you you see something in the news and you search up something that's come straight to you and it's it's a really good idea and you see that spike and you think damn there's something there I think that's a, that's a great feeling in itself but yeah it's been really good talking to you and I, I've definitely uh, learned some of myself so I hope you have as well. Justin, no, I've definitely as well. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, everyone, thanks for joining this episode of the Link Building Show. We will see you in the next one. We hope you learned something.